Uh, this meeting is being recorded in accordance with uh, open meeting law. Uh, the regular meeting of the Minneapolis Arts Commission will now begin. Meeting chair. Good evening. My name is Joan Vorderbergen and I am the chair of the Minneapolis Arts Commission. Before we begin, I'd like to note that this meeting includes the remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to the declared local health pandemic. I will now call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll so that we may verify the presence of a quorum. Commissioner Aylesworth. Present. Bedberry. Present. Brinkman. Present. Henry. Present. Silky Jones. Present. Kevorkian. Middag. I'm here. Smith. Present. And Chair Vorderbruggen. Present. Thank you. With that, we will proceed to our agenda, a copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks for being here this evening. I think we have um, a good agenda filled with some really positive work that we're gonna move forward and or that I believe we'll move forward um, that we'll get a presentation on from our public art department, but also, um, some dialogue, uh, but let's start with introductions. And if it's okay, I'd like to go last because I'd like to take a moment to just address a little uh, something um, that's come up that I just want uh, to kind of take a moment for once we're done with introductions. So how about Vice Chair Henry, will you start and tag people as you go? Hi, thank you. I am Janae D. Henry. I am an artist here in Minneapolis and creative. I am the Vice Chair of MAC and I live in Ward 8 under Council Vice President Jenkins. I'll pass this on to Swinton. Hello, uh, my name is Jeff Swinton. Um, I work at uh, Swan's uh, Corporation Food Company in, um, in sales and I'm in Ward 7 and uh, I'm new. I've been listening in on uh, on the last uh, few um, uh, uh, meetings, and uh, excited to uh, come on uh, visually and uh, and next month officially. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I guess I'll uh, the other new person, uh, Mari. <laughs> Hi, Mari. She, her. Um, I'm an artist living in Minneapolis. I live in the central neighborhood um, and my city council person is Alondra Connell. I'll pass it to Crystal. Thanks, Mari. I'm Crystal Brinkman. Um, she, her, hers. And I'm the executive director of Culture Club Collaborative, um, engaging with young people experiencing homelessness and artists. I live in Ward 1. Um, and I'll pass it to Mandy. Hello, Mandy Bedbury. I am in Ward 10. Um, I, this is my, this is, is this McCoy? I'm my third year now? Wow. I'm one of the old people here. That's amazing. Can't, I can't love it. I'm an elder. Um, I am also an actor in the city. Well, when there was acting still, um, and I teach uh, emotional intelligence using improv uh, for professional development um, for corporate America. Um, and I will pass it to Commissioner Smith. Hey, I'm uh, David Smith. He, him. I'm in Ward 1. I'm a layperson on the commission. I work as an engineer and I kind of just dabble in various uh, different kinds of arts, but nothing on a professional level. And I will tag Commissioner Aylesworth. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Lana Aylesworth, Ward 11. She, her, hers. Um, and I, I serve on the committee as a layperson, but I am an avid arts enthusiast, uh, emphasizing performing arts like theater, but really appreciating and learning every day about each one. Uh, I'm going to tag Lisa. 
Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Middag. I am a she, her, hers. And I live in Ward 2, which is Cam Gordon's ward. Uh, and I work for the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District on place-based strategies that make for an inclusive downtown. Um, most of that work. I realized uh, just for the new folks, when I looked at the scope of my budget for a year, which was around 200 grand, most of it went into um, the hands of artists and arts related organizations. So I, I was a lot more arts based than I realized even, which is great. I mean, it was always my intention anyway. So uh, uh, that's where most of my work intersects, I think, with the city. The Minneapolis DID also is the steward for the Nicollet um, public art installations that happen along Nicollet. So our the organization that I work for is sort of the um, sort of maintainer of those pieces. Um, and what else is relevant? I don't know. I'm knitting. <laughs> and I will tag um, Commissioner Silky Jones. Have you gone already, Ahava? No, I haven't yet. Thank you. I have to apologize in advance. I may have to be off video for part of the meeting, but it's nice to see all of you and Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Ahava Silky Jones and I represent Ward 7. I um, am the executive director for the Da Vinci Academy of Arts and Science. So I'm in K-12 education um, and an arts administrator in my former life, uh, which is what brought me uh, to the commission, but um, really just working in lots of different spaces around youth and advocacy and uh, equity through the arts. And this is my second year on the commission, so I'm no longer a newbie, <laughs> but I was just one year ago uh, this month. And I will tag Mary. Sorry, I wasn't expecting to get tagged yet. I didn't know we were done with commissioners. <laughs> Um, I'm Mary Altman. I am public art supervisor for the city and I supervise the public art team. Those of you that are just meeting me are going to be tired of hearing from me. Agenda every month. Welcome. Oh, and I will take Tina. Hi, I'm Tina. I am the uh, admin support for the Minneapolis Arts Commission, and I also work in long range planning. I'm the public, um, or I'm sorry, the program assistant in that department. And I live in Ward 5, and I think that's it. So, Joan, I will tag you. Thanks, everyone. Um, my name is Joan Vorderbruggen. I work in Wards 3 and 7. Um, I uh, have been on the commission for three, I guess, going on four years. I think that may be right, but I've lost track a little bit um, and served as chair this past year. Um, I uh, wanted to uh, pivot, and I don't mean to blindside anybody, but I wanted to just take a moment um, to share news that you may not be affected by, um, but you may be affected by, but nonetheless, um, it's been uh, news that greatly affected our arts community this week. And I just wanna give a moment to honor um, our friend Amelia Brown, who passed away last weekend, tragically and unexpectedly. Um, and I wanna just give an opportunity for anybody who feels as if they want to share anything about Amelia. Um, I know that um, this isn't an easy thing to do. So um, if you're not feeling um, up to doing so, it's completely okay and matters not, but I just thought that as the Minneapolis Arts Commission um, that it was important um, for us to just take a moment to honor um, an individual who did so much incredible work with artists in our community and who was such a warm and loving and talented and brilliant individual. Um, I can say that I didn't work really closely with Amelia myself on any, any, any collaborative way. I wish I had, I always wished I had, um, but I, I did see her around and I did, you know, was very aware of the work that she was leading. And I know that she just did tremendous work and, and her, one of her areas of expertise was to assist and support artists during times of crisis. And she was known globally, um, as someone who was a leader in this area. 
um, and did a lot of that work um, here, but also in many places across the country and across the globe. So um, if anybody would like to just say a few words to honor Amelia or to share or for us to maybe help each other to feel, um, I don't know, some some strength amongst each other. It's just, you know, I just want to open it up for a moment for anyone to do that if they if they want to. Lisa? Yeah, this is hard because Amelia was spectacular. Um, but I got to know Amelia when I worked um, on the board for Springboard for the Arts and she was a new board member and we spent a couple of years serving together. Um, and that's when I got to know uh, about her emergency arts assistance program. And when I think about her tenure at Springboard, especially last year when she was the chair, when Springboard responded to the COVID crisis and, and really they took that emergency arts idea and kind of put it on steroids and, and pumped a million dollars out to artists very quickly in community. You know that didn't happen. My cat hit my mute. <laughs> but it, it only happened because Amelia was there. Um, and and had that expertise and was able to to help them figure out how to make that work. So on the one hand, I've got all of that in my mind about all she did for artists and how well she understood that the response to emergency and crisis in culture and in community rests in artists better than anybody. And how do you just make sure they have the platform they need to help us all deal with what we might be dealing with in community in crisis. So that was key. And then I look at what she did working in the city of Minneapolis, which, you know, I worked for a time for Hennepin County. And, and we used to talk about how, you know, how challenging it is to work within systems and structures, especially ones that are like grounded in historic, um, in historic exclusion in particular and how hard it is to move those processes even with a cast of in, in well-intentioned people right and um the fact that she continued to work at the city on those efforts when i know from talking with her how challenging some of that stuff was but she got in there and she recognized that change doesn't happen unless people are willing to get in there and commit to doing it and how she could hold all of that and such joy such joy, such love, such warmth. Um, you never saw her when she didn't wrap you in a tremendous hug and remember 10 little things about you. I never managed that, but she like has you and she held you, you know, um, and was so warm and loving and empathetic and all of that went into the work she did. So I don't need to say much more except how how much I will miss her personally and professionally, her example and the pleasure of her company and all she brought um, to our community. Thank you so much, Lisa. Does anybody else want to share anything with the group? I would like to share just briefly. I did know Amelia really well. Um, uh, I didn't work closely with her, um, but she was, I think, one of the most welcoming people I've ever met in my entire life. I posted on Facebook today that every time I saw her, she acted like I was a long lost friend that she hadn't been seen in years that she was so excited to see. Um, and um, I can't think of anybody who, in my whole life, who greeted me with such enthusiasm. I mean, just. Um, and that was always so moving. I also, although I don't know the details of the work that she did for the city, I think it was a tremendous asset for the city to have her skills the last year as um, the city was trying to figure out how to work with the arts community in COVID and um, the arts community around the murder of George Floyd. Because of her experience in emergency arts, I think she had, um, the skills and um, you know the past experience in working with Hurricane Katrina to to address those kinds of tragedies and um, uh, and I'm sure that we benefited from it greatly. 
Um, I'm going to um, reply or forward uh, the Arts and Economy newsletter from December to everybody where um, Amelia was one of the staff that reflected on the past year so that you can all read what she said. Um, but it, this is a huge loss for the city. And what's really crazy about this is the council just um, gave her a full-time permanent job in January. <laughs> so this month, she went from a grant-funded temporary position to a full-time permanent job. It's just so odd. Anyways, thank you, Amelia. Thank you. Would anybody else like to share any words? Thanks, and thanks for allowing us to take a moment to make time. Um, I'm always really moved that while we work really hard as a group to try to accomplish a lot of business that I always feel that this particular group of people is more human centered than some of the other uh, groups that I work with uh, that are just very much down to business. And so I really appreciate that we can take a moment to be human with each other and, and express grief and um, express how we feel about um, you know, something happening in our community that was really unexpected and really sad. So I did send my condolences to Golgoon, who worked very closely with Amelia. And um, yeah, so thank you, Mary. If you would follow up with that letter, I think that that would be valuable for the group. Um, okay, any other updates or anything before we move on? Anyone would like to share? Okay, um, are there any corrections for the minutes for our December meeting? that Tina passed. Okay, um, then we will advance to our discussion portion of our agenda. And Mary, I am going to hand you the floor and I'm gonna ask if it's possible you're, it may just be my computer, but you sound a little bit low volume. If there's a way for you to kick the volume up just a little bit and I'll crank mine here. Um, but go ahead and um, take it away. I have moved closer to my computer, so I hope this is helpful. I think I have one of those computers that's kind of a problem in this way. Um, so you loud and clear. Go ahead. What? We can. I can hear you loud and clear. So that was really helpful. Thank you. Okay. So I am going to share my screen. So there. Um, can you guys see this? Yes. Let me know if you can't see it. Um, so, so um, you have on your agenda um, a couple of um, artwork designs to approve for the second floor for the new public service building. For the new commissioners, the city is in the process of building a new building that will be merging city staff from seven different buildings. Um, the building's across the street from the government center and it's not yet open to the public. Um, uh, but it houses a range of city departments and um, the public service center, which is the area where you get all of your permits, pay all of your city related bills, get any kind of help you need. Um, and this building has a $2 million public art budget with 17 artworks, um, most of which the commission uh, the commission designed or approved the designs for um, those artworks quite a while ago. Um, but we have a couple of new um, artworks that um, we're installing and I'll explain why in a second. And so I'm um, par as part of this, because these are on the second floor, I'm going to actually start out by just talking about all of the art that's on the second floor, because this really involves kind of bringing several works of art together. And so um, I want to want you to see how they overlap. So this is the second floor, which is open to the public. Of the Public Service Center. Um, uh, the public service or the public service building, the public service center, the area I just talked about is here, travels through here, travels through here is the main part of the second floor is this area that's open to the public um, where there are new service representatives who are being trained, who are extra friendly and helpful and 
um, our, you know, and there's a new program really designed to make getting these services from the city a lot easier than they have been in the past. This is on the uh, Skyway on a, um, actually a couple, few Skyways. And so a lot of people will be accessing this on the, um, through the Skyway and that's why it's on the Skyway level. So this Skyway up here in the left-hand corner goes to the Hennepin County Government Center, travels along um, the south side of the building and it goes to other um, um, buildings east of the Public Service Center, including the new Thrivent building um, and uh, other buildings on the east side of downtown. Um, there's also a sky bridge that bisects the first and second floor that travels across the top of the building, which is on the west side of the building, and then turns and travels through the east side of the building and goes to the half ramp, um, and um, which is where commissioners will be parking when you return to um, meeting in person. You'll be meeting in this building. Um, so uh, this uh, floor has several artworks that kind of come together. Um, two of those artworks actually span kind of the first and second levels. So the uh, main work, which I'll show you in a few minutes, I'll show you some more pictures of it, but the suspended lobby sculpture is over the stairs that go from the first, sec first floor to the mezzanine and then up to the second floor. The city seal um, starts on the first floor and the um, sky bridge um, goes across the front of it um, and so that you can view the top of the city seal from the suspension bridge right here. Um, and then uh, an art, another artwork that you've already approved is there is this bird safe glass designed by Futures North, which will be on both sides of the Skyway to the Government Center, as well as travel along the south side of the building on the interior Skyway. Um, so um, and uh, so, so those are all of the pieces and so they kind of form a little collection on the second floor, which will probably be the floor where the public spends the most time in the building. So this is the sky bridge that I just spoke of. So the artworks that we are adding, um, we are adding on um, the sky bridge because there are actually employee offices adjacent to the sky bridge. The city originally commissioned frosted glass for those windows and the window material showed up and it wasn't frosted. Um, somebody made a mistake in ordering it and so instead of sending the window material back and ordering frosted windows, the city decided to turn this into an artwork opportunity. So this is the Skyway on the West Sky or the Sky Bridge. This is the old Thrivent building here. If you take a right here, you go to the Government Center and you take a left, you go to the new Thrivent building. Oops, sorry. Um, and then this side is that same side over here. And then those windows are also on this side, which is the south side of the building. And um, that's the Skyway that goes to the Thrivent building. So there are a total of 13 windows. Um, the windows on the west side are surrounded by this beautiful um, stone. And then the windows on the south side are, are uh, painted sheetrock, gray, light gray painted sheetrock. And um, the floor condition on the south side is terrazzo, or on the west side is terrazzo, and the floor condition on the south side is actually now gray carpet. So in this um, Skyway, this is the, on the right are the windows that are going to have the bird safe glass design. And on the left are the windows that will have the new design. So because of the connection between the bird safe glass design and the windows design, we asked Futures North to just expand their um, palette in the building or um, canvas in the building and to also design these windows here. Um, oh, also, so this is gives you a, a view of the windows from the interior or the employee side. On the south side, the, the side that Futures North is going to design, there are a total of seven windows, but you can't actually view them all at once from the interior. The center one is in a copy room, 
and then the three to the left are in one office and the three to the right are in a different office. Um, the ones on the south, you can see all in one room and we've selected artist Marlena Miles for that. She is also over, was already on con under contract and doing another mural in the building. Um, and so, uh, and actually in this part of the building, you can see Marlena's six windows and future, three of future North's windows. So in the same office. So it was really important that they work together and develop a design that complemented each other. Um, so uh, since we have new commissioners, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the process. We're doing this process in other parts of the building. We are having artists design murals that are applied to the glass with a vinyl material, and it is a two um, layer printing process, um, uh, which is like for these artists is like a totally new medium in terms of working. Um, one layer is white and that layer is on the employee side and one layer is color. Both the white layer and the color layer can have transparent various levels of transparency and opacity. Um, we um, so we have a couple of goals for these murals. One is that um, it let they let in as much light as possible so that the employees don't lose a lot of daylight, but at the same time they have privacy. So the artists were given the challenge of making the lower part, and this page is supposed to illustrate this, the lower part mo more opaque and the upper part clear. So the, the gray color in this drawing represents clear. So, um, and kind of if you look at these, this is a mock-up of the wall that Marlene is designing, but um, if a seven foot tall person stood next to these, you would really need pretty good opacity um, about halfway up um, in order to give the employees privacy. So um, Futures North has designed a piece. Um, I'm going to show you their design first. And it's called Lines of Acknowledgement. It connects to the piece that I showed you the design for earlier for the Skyway, which is called Lines of Flight Human. Lines of Flight Human is really about human immigration. And Lines of Acknowledgement is about, um, connects to the um, uh, indigenous place names in the city. So it's trying to, you know, indigenous folks are really the folks that didn't migrate and so it's a nice um, complementary piece in terms of that content. It also has, um, they also laid over their design, you'll see this in a second, um, an image of the Mississippi River. Um, the way that um, Futures North works is they create a code. So they turn information into a coding system that creates an abstract pattern. So they took data related to indigenous place names, turned it into a code and created this abstract pattern and then laid the river over it. You can see in this design, the white represents more opacity and the upper layer or the upper area, which is gray, the gray represents um, uh, clear glass. Uh, they have. Um, we are we prototyped this a couple of weeks ago and I'm showing you their most recent prototype. They've done a couple of different prototypes to look at the color um, and uh, try to get the color right. So this is the prototype on the Skyway side and you can see that on the Skyway side the color stands out more whereas on the employee side which in the copy room the white layer is um, more apparent and the reason that they did that is because you know the the thought was that the employees probably want something more neutral in their space on a daily basis and so um marlena and futures north decided to put the white layer on the employee side and this is a close-up you can kind of see how um th the color is poking through here you can also see on the copy room side that there's a good deal of light coming through even on the lower layer. I think that's about 40% transparency on the lower layer and that it gives them privacy, but at the same time, um, the public can't see in on the lower layer. 
So that's Futures North's design. Um, Marlena Miles has created a design that um, I think is a fabulous counter to the city seal, which if you're not familiar with the city seal, the city seal is a European American vision of the city of Minneapolis and the, um, in the area of St. Anthony Falls from around the time of 1878. And um, uh, it's a really fabulous and interesting artifact, but it also represents for some people, particularly indigenous people, um, the colonization of America and so, and of this region. And so Marlena chose to create a piece that is in a way a counter to that. And instead of talking about European American values, this piece really focuses on Dakota words and values, including values that represent harmony, um, generations and growth of the people, um, understanding, awareness of silence, responsibility and way of life and relatives and kinship. Um, these are Marlena's designs. She was really, she really liked the idea of doing something that um, had a, the feeling of stained glass, which is kind of a nod to City Hall, which is the city's other civic building, and also had a kind of an, a deco feeling, but then again, focused on these um, indigenous values. And I think in a second, I'm going to get out of the PowerPoint and zoom in on one of these so that you can really see the details. They contain a lot of animal um, and plant forms. Um, they're rarely detailed. Um, uh, I think they will give the public a lot to look at over a long period of time. Oops. So we actually prototyped this in the space this morning. You can see um, Marlena's drawings are super vibrant, but the prototype itself is, um, you know, less vibrant, and that's because of the transparency. So that was intentional on her part. Um, you can see in the center, you can kind of see some of the detail. I took this picture, it's in the lower area, so you can kind of see the opacity. This has an eagle form in it, and the detail actually shows part of the eagle's nest and the eggs in the eagle's nest. And so the, uh, the photo on the far left is of course from the sky bridge and the photo on the far right is the photo on the employee side so you can see that the tones are much more muted with the white um, i just want i just created a few different photos to show people how these artworks will be connected to the space since they're not installed yet so if you're looking south from the sky bridge you can see marlena's pieces will be here and the but you will also at the same time be able to see Futures North's design, um, which is not in the Skyway windows yet, but um, this is the prototype on the right hand side. It's much more the bird safe glass design by Futures North is much more transparent than these pieces are. If you're looking southeast and you're going towards Thrivent or you're coming out of the Government Center building, you'll be able to see Marlena's piece in combination with Futures North's um, other piece, um, and you can see that they're working in the same pattern. They're actually working with the exact same gradient too, white gradient. And then if you look down the Skyway East, you will see how it features North's two pieces come together there. So that just gives you a kind of a sense of how all of this is curated and what the artists were thinking in terms of, oops, sorry, um, how the pieces would work together. Gonna get out of this and um, zoom in on some of these here so that you can see them. And maybe what now would be a good time for questions. Mary, this is Lisa. I'm. I know. Um, can you maybe remind the group what Marina's other work at the service center is and the and and your process for then selecting her for this uh, additional opportunity? Right. So uh, so uh, both Mar Marlena was selected through a process that where we selected um, five different artists to do five different vinyl murals on glass in areas on um, the upper floors of the building. She is has a mural that uh, 
um, um, focuses on uh, the Dakota relationship to the area around St. Anthony Falls um, that actually spans two conference room windows. Um, all of those artists were selected through an open call um, and Futures North was also selected through an open call. Um, we did not do an open call for these projects. We just uh, decided to expand the contracts of artists currently working in the building because we were under a really tight timeline and we need to cover these windows before the Skyway opens to the public to give the employees the privacy. So we didn't, we had a really short timeline to turn this around. So basically, the staff working on this project decided, I mean, Futures North, it was pretty obvious that they were just right across from the space and um, they were already working on both sides of the Skyway going into the government center. So it made sense to give them both sides of the Skyway in the interior since they were already there. And um, we selected Marlena because we thought it would be really good to have a native perspective adjacent to the seal. Um, and we also did have actually another Native American artist working on um, one of the murals for another floor, Angela Two Stars. Um, she already has another piece in the city's collection. So this is her second piece in the city's collection. So that's why we selected Marlena. This is Commissioner Henry. I understand um, if Futures North came before the, you know, the the gift, I guess, with the in, the interior windows. But in my mind, I'm surprised that the Native American artwork is not what is on the street, and that the, you know, uh, that basically the residential artist isn't who is on the outside of the building that everybody can see. So Futures North. Um, just to clarify, they are not on the outside of the building. They're on the inside of the building on a skyway. Oh, you mean, oh, the so just so that passerbyers can see from the street like we're driving. They'll see the bird safe windows before they see any Native American work. Right. And actually, so just to clarify the way this bird safe glass design works, the further apart you are from the design, the less you can actually see. You can see it from the street, but the further apart you are, you, I mean, it's it's much more transparent because it's, it's it's just white dots and dashes. Um, so they were selected through a call for artists to do the Skyway. Gotcha. So um, Marlena was selected through a call for artists to do interior work. So this, the, the Skyway design, they've been under contract for a couple of years to do that as well as the bird safe glass design on the 10th floor. Thank you. Oops. I've got a question, Mary. I know that you um, have been working so hard on this project for so long and a lot of it's really coming now to fruition. <clears throat> and if you don't have an answer to this, it's totally OK, because I recognize that like you've got to get the work up. But I know that um, because they're what were the total amount of artworks that are going to be in the new building again? Counting the seal, there are 17 works. Mm -hmm. So I guess for everybody to just consider. Seal is obviously maybe not an artwork and. And, you know, we didn't hire artists to do that, but so it's more like a conservation work, but yes. It's still a kind of a, a point of interest and an object and yeah. Um, it's just, you know, I think we've talked about this over the course of time and, and as all these projects progress that like how rich the storytelling is and the, the stories about the artists and the work that they made and how it's connected to the community and to the region. And, and there's just so much, mm -hmm. so much to say about yeah, every single one of these projects that has any thought been given to how the information is going to be presented to the community when it is safe to look to be able to see this stuff yeah so there's we're working on kind of layers of that so each work has an explanatory plaque um so there's something there um the the website will have even more detailed information 
we actually are, we've been working on a series of Skype interviews with city employees who are going to be working in the building and the artists. And the employees are interviewing the artists and those will be made available to the public. And we've been sharing those with the city employees as a way to get them excited about coming to the building. Um, many of the artists interviewed employees to get ready for the project. Um, we will probably do some sort of video. Um, we'll also probably do some sort of, once we are able to do it, we'll probably do some artist talks in the space um, as well. Uh, so we, we're having kind of layers of material out there. Um, and, uh, you know, especially given the fact that so many people that are in the building are going to be, some of the employees will be there every day, right? And looking at these works for some employees to get the city for decades. So, you know, the opportunity to continually learn about the pieces. We'll also probably do some tours. That'll um, be exciting and we'll want to participate. We'll want to be yeah. at the top of your list. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, we will do some fabulous event when we are able to. Um, many of the works, as you know, are programmable. <laughs> and so they're like, an, there's something to see. Actually, that's the next step. I'm going to actually give you an update on what's going up. But um, so I, I think we need some sort of event. There's so many artists. Right now, we can't even bring the artists together to celebrate because there's so many of them. We'd be violating COVID rules. Right. Right. Well, hopefully, I guess, you know, as things do become safer, it will be exciting to hear updates about that and when we can participate as well. But so we do need a motion this evening. Um, are we there? Are we ready? Does anyone else have any questions, concerns, dialogue? You're welcome to speak. Okay. Um, can I get it? So the motion is to approve the second floor artist design glass, um, the futures north design. And the Marlena Miles design, can we get a recommendation to approve both of those projects for the um, the new public service building? This is Commissioner Brinkman. I motion to approve both designs for the new public service building. Okay, can I get a second? Commissioner Henry, I second. Thank you, Commissioner Henry. We have a proper motion before us. Is there any discussion before the clerk calls the roll? Okay, with that, with that, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Okay, Commissioner Aylesworth. Aye. Commissioner Bedberry. Aye. Commissioner Brinkman. Aye. Commissioner Henry. Aye. Commissioner Silky Jones. Aye. Commissioner Middag? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. And Chair Vorderbruggen? Aye. Great, that motion passes. Thank you. And thank you, Mary, for bringing that to us this evening. It was really nice to be able to hear more background about this work. It's very beautiful and um, it's exciting that it's coming coming together. So, okay. Hey, was, I'm just gonna give a up, quick update on the other works that are going up, right? Oh, my apologies. Yeah, and if you don't mind, um, we'll need for this to be pretty efficient, but please do. Thanks. Yeah, this is really short. So, um, so uh, they're new commissioners, so you're probably not familiar with all the breadth of work in the that's going in the new building. But this was a piece as a suspended sculpture over the great stairs um, going up to to the public service building. This is a work created by Tristan Al Haddad from Atlanta, Georgia. It is a programmable moving um, sculpture that includes um, uh, programmable lights that change colors. It is called Current Conditions. It's based on, it's a, an artwork that focuses on climate and, um, and in particular, temperature changes in temperature and humidity. And this piece will move according to changes in temperature and humidity um, in the city um, and it moves three times a day and it moves and then also there is um, changing um, kind of a, a light program that goes with the movement um, so it will um, change three times a day it can take it's made up of um, 
these things that we're calling the orbitals, um, th like approximately 3,000 acrylic orbitals that are strung together, and um, uh, they they move from side to side. It, uh, this is kind of like a vault-like form that um, the orbitals take when um, the piece is the most um, retracted. Retracted, maybe the opposite of retract, retracted is what I should say. But they form all kinds of different really cool shapes. You can see this really great view from the exterior of the building. Um, it can create some pretty dramatic views of the building at night. Um, and will, I think, really draw attention to the building and will be a great asset to this part of downtown. Um, another collection of works that's going on in the building is a series of illuminated ceilings in the elevator lobbies on seven of the floors. And so these installations are going in right now. The light programs are not done. Um, but so I just wanted to give, give you um, a, a sense of the range of the projects. This is Aaron Marx's kind of upside down topo map of the St. Anthony Falls area um, that's on the third floor. Um, on the right is a really um, bright and fun work by Christopher Harrison, um, which is on the floor where Public Works and 311 um, are located. It includes pieces of um, computer chips and motherboards, as well as quotes by the 311 operators. This work doesn't have any lighting on it right now, so you're not getting the full sense of what it will look like. Um, this is the fifth floor, which is where the health department is, and it's a work by Lori Borgrave. This is also not lit up at this point, but it's um, made up of hundreds and hundreds of pieces of uh, little acrylic sculptures that she hand pours and forms herself. This is her first public artwork. Um, and this is a piece by Jim Brenner, which is on the police floor, um, the investigations floor on the eighth floor. Um, this piece also actually includes some sound, um, and it has uh, three different beautiful lighting programs. Uh, um, I can't wait to show you guys this work. So anyways, I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, the murals are starting to go in next week, and uh, so I might have to give you all private tours for a while, but I'd, I'd be happy to do that. It's really exciting to have all of these artists creating this great work, and it's exciting that the Civic is the city is showcasing the work of local artists in the space. Thank you so much. And thanks. I know, Mary, you've been working your tail off on this all the time. It's to get a it privilege. Started. It's totally a privilege. I am having so much fun. Good. That's great. Any other questions or comments before we move on? I do have one. Um, I'm grateful for the city of Minneapolis and what obviously we're here for the city also, but I do hope to see more public art, um, you know, that the residents can see and enjoy and absorb um, on a day to day. So that's well, we're, we're getting ready to do calls for um, for many different projects now that the building is done and we um, we have a lot of money to spend. So we're going to be doing a lot of projects in the neighborhoods now. Good. Yeah, that would be exciting to be a part of that. Any other questions or comments? Awesome. OK, um, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our executive committee updates. Um, first, just want to welcome our new commissioners, uh, Commissioner Mari Mansfield and Commissioner Jeff Swinton. I know the formalities will be tended to come February, but welcome. And I wanted to give you each just a chance to say hello. And if you wanna share a few words about why you were interested in coming on, you're welcome to, I'm putting you on the spot. So if you would rather not, it's okay, but I'd like to give you a moment to say hello to everyone and um, share a few words if you wish. I'll go first. Um... Uh, once again, Jeff Swinton, uh, really excited to be on the uh, Arts Commission. Um, I, I, I just think that arts is so um, powerful and, and is what's really, really important in times like this, right? I mean, I think it's always important, but I think it's, it magnifies in times like this. And not coming from an art background, um, it's just 
um, I do some, you know, I'm an art enthusiast, I do some collecting, but um, not coming from an art background, I recognize how, because I'm not in that world all the time, how powerful it is, right? And how, uh, whether I'm in my house or that, you know, I'm in public spaces, how I notice it, how it changes your mood, and just just the day to day as just kind of a lay person, as a you know, as an ordinary Joe, I, I, I just think it's important. So um, when I when I saw that there was uh, opportunities to join the board, um, I, um, I you know I jumped at it, leaped at it because I think there is just um, you know what I think I could bring is that you know just a different perspective. Um, I am in corporate America, so that you have to bear with me on that. But um, but um, just a passion, just put in work, and just where, wherever the work is needed, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll raise my hand and I uh, and and, and want to put in work and want to learn from you um, from you guys. So that's it for me. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I wanted to mention this about you too, Mr. Swinton. Um, that uh, you have some history in your background with youth work as well. Am I right about that with the STEM work and some of the things you've done in North, over North? Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I'm on a couple of uh, uh, foundations, and my fraternity does a lot with uh, with youth. In uh, you know, uh, and we, when we try to uh, focus on uh, North Minneapolis, and and and, with, uh, and the foundation is a grant found uh, uh, um, uh, producing uh, foundation. So yeah, it's. Um, you know how do you know how do we uh, you know how do we be more inclusive like uh, i think you guys have, you know are, are trying to do how do we get uh, you know uh, people of color blacks more involved in the process you know early on understanding you know when the calls are what's needed making sure uh, folks are, are are prepared and um and, and can show up very well when when mary you know has you know opportunities that are coming up I think that's going to be, um, you know, a very important, and I, I, I hope to help there. You are in good company. Yeah. Does anybody have um, any questions or comments for Mr. Swinton? Okay, thank you, um, Commissioner Mari Mansfield. Do you want to say hello to everyone and say a few words? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mari. I've been um, a Minneapolis resident for most of my life. Um, I'm also a visual artist. My What I'm most recognized for is my work at um, George Floyd Square, painting the names of 169 people killed by um, the police in the United States. Um, I'm also um, an educator and an activist. I currently um, am a Native American education tutor for the Elk River School District. Um, and I'm very excited uh, as a Latina Indigenous woman to um, try and help bring art to the communities of Minneapolis and really embrace all of our amazing cultural differences here in Minneapolis. I'm really excited to get started and be here with you all. What a gift. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us. Does anybody have any questions or anything for Mari? Commissioner Henry, I wanna thank you so much for joining us. I didn't get an opportunity to sit with you um, before uh, this meeting tonight, and I'm, I'm very grateful to have you a part of the Minneapolis Arts Commission. Thank you. Great, and we're gonna have uh, much more time to work together and figure out where strengths and abilities can be helpful. Um, but it's really nice to just know a little bit about your backgrounds and some of your passions and interests. I think that's um, inspiring as we start a new year um, to get some new people that have some new skills. Um, okay, so moving on to the next item, um, we have an executive committee nomination process, which we need to accomplish next month. And so with our, I, I hate to say this, I don't mean it derogatory, but we've got a bit of a skeleton crew with I think six remaining vacancies. <laughs> However, um, I think the executive committee is a really important body right now um, as we're navigating some, uh, some tensions um, and some um, asks of our elected and some 
you know, the letters that we will be talking about in just a moment. Um, and I think it's a really interesting time. I personally um, feel like our 2021 work plan that we're going to talk about too in just a moment is really open right now. And I think that we, you know, it's time for us to really think about prioritizing what it is that we wish to accomplish given um, the circumstances that we're more aware of than we were a year ago, right? Like we didn't exactly know how we fit or where we fit. And I feel like we in some ways have, know a little bit more about where we fit and know a little bit more about some of the challenges. Um, it's just a little clearer. So it's a, it's a really good, it's a hard time to lead. Um, and I think that that's true for any group of people, um, especially a civic group. Um, it's challenging and I think there's a lot. Um, there's also, I totally appreciate that there's probably quite a bit of fatigue um, happening for everybody on some level. Um, a lot of us have been Zooming for months. Um, you know, many of us have families that we're caring for and um, no matter what it is that you're doing to get through the pandemic, it's taxing. Um, on all of us for different reasons. So I guess I just want to appreciate that the top volunteerism aspect of our, our group is, is presents a barrier. Um, I also, this is the last thing I'll say about it, and then I maybe Commissioner Henry can like say a few words if you want to, to just about the executive role, but um, I am not married to the chair position. I know I've put that out there before. And when I say that, um, I also would like to just say that if anybody were interested in the chair position, that I would be um, of great support to you, too. So just know that um, if it's something that you wish to rise to the challenge of chairing the Arts Commission, that the door is open and you would get support. Um, and even if that means getting on the executive committee for a while and like, you know, sort of feeling that um, that sort of that workflow out and deciding later. I just want to put it out there that um, this particular position should change. Um, not like constantly all the time or people resigning early, hopefully, but like, you know, that we should we should see some changes in our leadership. So I want to just encourage anybody who's interested to consider a seat on executive. Um, we agenda set. And we also, a lot of times, we'll just get in deep dialogue, sometimes with staff in particular that we need to talk to about things. Um, we set, I think, a lot of a lot of the goals and a lot of the kind of the focus for the rest of the commission in ways. So it's a pretty interesting group. Um, Commissioner Henry, do you want to mention anything about executive seats? I do. Um, I think it's the best way to provide innovative ideas and to really hear up front what's going on in the background before obviously our general meeting or our sessions here monthly. Um, so it gives us more time, as Joan mentioned, to dialogue and to communicate and to, you know, um, think constructively, but, uh, but then also abstractly about what we want and how we can get it. And usually that takes more than one person, you know, um, to jump off ideas of one another. And that's, you know, so it takes teamwork. And so this is, it's not a solo um, situation at all. Uh, there is tons of support. And I feel that, um, yeah, if you have a voice, executive committee is the best place to be. And I also feel that with the size of our um, commission right now and the number of vacancies that we may continue to have, um, that we may not be, um, we may, we may, I don't want anyone to get disappointed, but we may choose not to um, divide into so many subcommittees at this moment um, because we're just such a, we're kind of, we're just down people. Um, and so executive might actually be the place where we invest a lot of our muscle. Um, so that's just something to consider too. There are six seats that are available. Um, I'm gonna let, uh, that's the chair position, the vice chair position, the secretary position, and then we can have three um, commissioners that will be uh, commissioners at large. So up to six um, seats uh, on exec, uh, but definitely need the three, um, 
the three positions, chair, vice chair, and secretary. So um, anyway, so I'm going to maybe share the document that Tina gave. You all will be allowed to vote. Um, I think at this moment in time, I sit as chair. Commissioner Henry sits as vice chair. The secretary position is open with um, Commissioner Benson rolling off. Um, Commissioner Middag serves at large. Uh, Commissioner Ellsworth serves at large and Commissioner Bedbury is has been nominated or is nominating to be to join exec. So I'm not sure um, Commissioner Bedbury if there's a specific position that you're interested in and, and we can talk offline about that too but um, so that's kind of the slate that we have today. Um, so if you're interested maybe Tina do you want to chime in and kind of just talk about process and I'll share my screen really quick. Sure. Um, so there's a, a form uh, that Joan's going to share. And basically, if you are interested, even if you are currently serving, you have to reapply or, or, or nominate yourself. So um, so you would just write in the name, your name of whatever position you would like to serve on um, as an at large secretary, vice chair or chair. And then um, you would give that if actually you don't even need to write it on here just email me which position you would like in your name and then i'm going to put together this form and then um i'll send it around once we get well i'll have a deadline and i'll send this around and then you guys would vote you know who you'd like if if you're okay with whoever there's only one person that put their name as chair you know you can that's probably going to be the person that's going to take that position um if you have a preference, if there's two or more names and you would just select the person you would like and then I'll send out a final ballot and then you would vote on that at the February meeting. And then those would be the people that would fill those positions for one year. Um, and so hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Let me know if you have any questions about what I just said. <laughs> so yeah, it's just summarizing. Tina will send an email with a deadline of when you need to just submit to her your your vote for chair, vice chair, secretary, and any commissioners at large. So who you want to see in those roles, as well as if you would like to see yourself in one of those roles. So it's kind of a two part thing. Commissioner Henry. Hi, yes. So this is a conversation I was not involved to bring up to this January meeting, but I am relocating. So I will be leaving in the spring from Minnesota for the first time. Birds leaving the nest, it's time to go, you know. And unfortunately, this means my term is ending early. You know, I just signed on last year. And unfortunately, you know, I'm leaving my family. There's tons of you know, parts to this. And so with that being said, I was holding off because in my mind, I'm like, we have it taken care of, you know, I, in my mind, know who I feel I want to be as a uh, part of vice chair, but that, that kind of excludes everyone else from having information and knowing what's going on. So I am leaving. Um, I will still be here next month to vote also. So I do want you to keep in mind that putting my name there is, is wonderful but I will be stepping away um, in a couple of months, um, if not later, but either way, um, it's best that you know now, being that the voting is, is about to begin. I don't miss everyone. Such an extraordinary loss you will be to us, Janae. I'm so happy for you, but I, I you were, God, uh, I don't know how we're going to manage that without you. And for my money, for as long as we've got you, I'd like you at, in as large a leadership role as as you want, for as long as you can. Um, even as a transition, I think it would be good. And assuming there's a longer conversation that has to happen around the recruiting piece, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. Be, be hard pressed not to get my vote. And I wanted to say the other thing I wanted to say is there's nothing magic about me serving on exec. And I've served for a lot of years and I'm ready for new blood. So clear the deck, man. And anyway, oh, that's not, it. That's, not that's, so that's, fast. That's I know. All I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm teasing. You know what? 
Commissioner Henry, I know I'm sorry that I know I was aware of this and have been honoring uh, Janae's wish to not make it into a big spectacle. So I will do so. But I want to just affirm what Lisa just said and that as long as you are willing to be here and able before you move on to pursue your dreams, we will very gratefully have you um, in your leadership position, but certainly that's um, your decision to make. So um, yeah, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, and same goes for you, Commissioner Midegg. I know that you probably feel like you've been sort of have having had to do this as a, an elder statesman on our commission. I'm like that old stinky shoe that you've got in your closet that you keep putting on because it's comfortable, Cause we it. but. <laughs> we love it. We You're said. very wise. You have a lot of historic <laughs> continuum and you know so much about policy and about, so like, I just, I can't, I don't want to underscore that like, yeah, I get it. I want new people too, but it's, it's valuable to have a knowledgeable person that isn't brand new. As so many of us are. Um, any other comments or questions, certainly reach out to me. You are super welcome to reach out to me anytime if you want to talk about it, if you're unsure, um, whatever. But any other comments or questions this evening? Does anybody want to throw their hat in the ring um, while we're together? Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, thank you very much. And Tina, thank you for helping us with the process and supporting us to be able to kind of, you know, get through this with ease. So great. Okay, we can move on. Um, we, uh, the executive committee decided to suspend the January retreat for what I feel are obvious reasons, but I just wanted to like tell you all this because we've been talking about it for some time. Um, we took some big actions in December um, and we're going to talk about, you know, what what's come of that, but it's just been kind of a hold your breath kind of position to be in. Um, and it's really hard to focus on what our priorities will be at the moment um, because we've made some pretty big asks um, that will, I think, you know, whatever way they shake out are going to affect the way we think about our work and what we want to focus on moving forward. So that's, I hope I'm articulating that okay. Also just recognizing that a lot of commissioners have said in various conversations that they're very stretched for capacity and that a lot of people's professional lives and personal lives are just asking for a lot from them and, and that we don't want to put one more thing on anybody's calendar unless it has like really clear focus and intent um, and is a strategically good use of our time. So we're just going to push pause on the retreat for now. Does anybody want to add anything, have any questions about that? Okay, thank you. Um, next item, uh, our letters to the Audit Committee and the Department of Civil Rights. Um, I think I will start by saying we sent the letter. Tina Beach sent it on our behalf. Uh, Janae and I authored emails to accompany our letters um, to 52 staff and elected um, at the city. Um, both our letter um, to the audit committee as well as our letter to the interim director of the Department of Civil Rights. We received one response from the interim director of the Department of Civil Rights and I'm going to let Commissioner Henry give that update in a moment. Um, we've received no response from anyone else. Um, we, uh, Tina did reach out to the audit committee's clerk to ask them if they received our letter to get like a receipt of confirmation, you know, confirmation that like it was received. And that clerk did uh, respond saying that yes, the audit committee chair did receive the letter and the internal audit committee um, lead, I'm not sure what that person's position or title is, has also received it and been made aware of it. So we got confirmation of receipt. Um, but that's it for now. Um, so that is of great concern. Um, their meeting is scheduled for February 8th, and I am unsure if we will be included on their agenda. Although whether they um, let us give us the courtesy of letting us know 
um, if they've made the decision to um, put us on their agenda or even react to or respond or create any kind of a um, anything about what we have sent, um, we, we still won't know. And um, but we'll be able to kind of check limbs, if nothing else to see if um, if that's been picked up on their agenda. And if not, then either way, it's gonna be, I think, a broader conversation this t uh, for executive and for our larger MAC commission this time next month. So until then, we've just made this decision to hold tight, hope for a response, um, hope for um, any of our council members, their staff to acknowledge what we've brought forward. Um, and if that doesn't happen, we're gonna talk about it. And if it does happen, we're gonna talk about it, which is probably not what you wanted to hear today, but that's the reality. And so I just wanna be really transparent about it. Um, however, we did receive one response, which was tremendous. And I know that we can't give like all of the details, about it, but I do want Commissioner Henry to tell us all about it. But before then, um, Jeff, did you have your hand up? Did you have a question? Yes, I did. So that audit committee uh, meeting uh, on the February 8th, is that open to the public? I believe so. Uh, just like any other um, yeah. city council meeting, you know, of council members, it's, it's a committee. So yeah, and also, um, we should be able to see their agenda. I think it's a, a, yeah. a week before or so, so we should we should be watching and updating each other about that, and then considering um, what you know if we want to attend or have a presence. So that's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else before we move on to the next piece of this story? <sighs> I think I should say, Commissioner Aylesworth, you did receive some information from your council member. It was not related to the letters necessarily, but do you want to just share what you got? Sure, certainly. Um, after the arts resolution went to council members uh, without our notification prior to that, I sent an email to my council member, Jeremy Schrader, and did hear back that he was going to follow up with the authors of that resolution. Um, he has touched base with uh, BCP Jenkins and so that we know it's at least on the radar for future conversation. And I believe Jeremy is on the audit, um, excuse me, Commissioner, uh, Council Member Schrader is on the audit committee as well. So I'll be looking into whether or not we get on the agenda. And I think right now my general approach is to encourage all of us to be in communication with our council members whenever we see fit as active citizens of Minneapolis and um, just putting it on our radar to check in on what the city is up to. And, you know, if we want to be a part of it, I think we all need to uh, dedicate some time and energy to to showing up to whatever opportunity is made available. That's a great reminder that the communication needs to be ongoing. And if you're comfortable even saying, did you receive our letter? I mean, you know, if you, I don't want to make that like a mandated action for anybody because I think everybody has different levels of um, comfort and, you know, transparency with their elected, but, you know, you're welcome to reach out. And if you do, it'd be great to share that information with us. So, um, okay. Any other questions or comments about the audit committee piece? Can we just get a reminder? Is a, uh, is the audit committee made up of everyone and has a separate chair or is it a subset? It's, I believe it's five or six council members and a staff or two. I would have to relook at it. Um, I know that we, I listed, we listed all of the members on our letter. Okay, I'll go um, find so that. Thanks. It's a subcommittee, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's chaired by council member Paul Masano. Okay, any other comments or questions? Okay, sure. Commissioner Henry, do you wanna give the update about the second portion of this? I do, but I do also believe Swinton put his hand up again. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Commissioner I'm Swinton. No, I'm trying to lower it. I, I don't know why it keeps oh. on coming back. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, 
to touch base about our meeting with the interim director. We ended up having a meeting. So that's that's a phenomenal you know, stepping stone right there is more than a response via email. It's a meeting, you know, so we spoke face to face or screen to screen, I don't know, um, virtually anyway, in regards to the letter that I wrote um, and sent on behalf of Mac for support and assistance with our um, concerns and the issues that we're dealing with. And he was very receptive. Right now they are, they do have an interim director as Joan stated, his name is Franklin Reed, um, very nice man, who used to also be a, um, a, in a, excuse me, city attorney. He was in the city attorney's office, he's a lawyer by trade. Yeah, so that's helpful. But also because he has that brain, yeah, and then he also has um, the other capacities that he's the, he holds. So he sits on other commissions at this time who um, are also dealing with the same things that we're dealing with. There's low, there's high turnover, low interest, low morale, um, and he was very transparent about that. But also open to collaborating, also open to supporting the concerns that we have in regards to BIPOC, um, you know, seats in regards to having a voice in space at the city, wherever we can possible, because we are the arts and arts is important for the city of Minneapolis in regards to revenue, but then also in regards to health and um, well-being. So he's he's our, he's going to be, a, a, I think, a very nice asset to have and a, a great, um, new beginning, not to use what these, you know, new catchphrases that CNN and other mediums might be using, but in the way that uh, I see it is the fact that we, we can expand this way, you know, other voices and other forms of leadership will now see and hear Mac, um, whether we get responses from some of these people or not, which is the unfortunate part. So if he, give, if he is given us space, if he is giving us space, why aren't the rest of them? And I feel that no matter what time it is in our lives and what the city is dealing with, it is still an important um, issue because when is gonna be the best time? None of us knows, right? If we're all dealing with uncertain times, none of us knows what's coming next. And it's not about waiting for the best time. It's about standing up when you know something isn't right or when you know that you can do much more than you're doing. And I commend him for being honest with us, but then also supportive of that conversation. And he was. And I'm reluctant only in regards to the audit because I feel that any request for an audit should, should be, you know, approved. Come look at what's happening. <laughs> and um, no matter how high on you know your priority list we are, put us on there. And I look, you know, I'm I'm reluctant to to hear if they will or will not. Um, and that's only because of you know what we know now, which is not even the mayor responded or and not even other members of city staff have responded to our, our letters. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. I wanna just add that Mr. Reed, what I really appreciated about the time, our time together, as Janae said, was that he was empathetic to like the, the, the frustration we're feeling. Um, and as a person who's in a director position, I thought that that was really, really refreshing to be like, yeah, like this is, I'm hearing this from other groups that this is, that these times are growing even more challenging with turnover and retaining BIPOC talent and, and feeling like you have a meaningful place at the table to influence, you know, what you want to do um, and, and who you speak for, your constituents and your ward. Um, and being valued. So it, I had never even thought about the fact that like other boards and commissioners, you know, boards and commissions like would be having like such similar issues as us, but it's no surprise, right? So um, 
so he didn't want to speak for the chairs and the there's they're seating their um commissions now too he oversees a few of them um and so we'll know more next month again but he was very welcoming he definitely kind of like rooted the space and like leaders should know other leaders um and that he felt he used words like resilience that the Minneapolis Arts Commission is trying to create paths for agency. Um, and, and, you know, that he was kind of an generative, like he wasn't like, well, let's go, you know, you should go strike up this conversation or sort of like move this way. He was sort of like, let's get together and talk and see what comes. Um, as other people who care very dearly for their city for different reasons, um, and are facing some similar issues with the um, groups that they serve on. So without giving too much more detail, because I think he needs to vet kind of the ideas that we had um, as we spoke, I just I just felt like he was offering something that made sense. Um, and that felt really generous in this moment. And so I really have to thank you, Janae, um, by, you know, really bringing that forward, that this might be a person in a body that could meet us meet with us and like really consider like what we're experiencing so i see tina's hand up yeah i just had a quick question i was just going to ask did he uh recommend going the audit route or did he uh even suggest maybe the city doing an audit on all boards and commissions did he even mention anything like that or Okay, I was just curious because I didn't know if I should reach out to him and try to work with him and get something oh, set sure. up for you guys. So, okay. He was, I don't recall him saying anything about, he just, I mean, he, I, I feel like he, we updated him about that action and he kind of met it with like understanding, but he didn't say like, that's what we're going to do or anything like that. So, no, and I, I wanted to add this commissioner Henry, um, I wanted to add also that this for for Mac to know that if he's willing to help, you know, this is he is going to probably be the best example that we've ever had to have outside support. And then hopefully, you know, this opens the door for other people to turn their heads and say, yeah, we'll help. Um, so I just want to kind of shed some more hope that if we can get someone to help now, this may, you know, just be just a, a another picture for someone else to see like it's not a big deal to help other people <laughs> and the thing that i love about it is and what we talked about in our december meeting is how uncomfortable it feels in this moment to be screaming that we want to be of service like how mm -hmm. awkward that feels um and i never thought that like well maybe we could help other commissions so like okay like the door slammed in our face for the people that we felt we would be a value to but we didn't realize that like and i don't want to name all the different commissions but there's a few that are are pretty amazing like and the ways that they're volunteer leaders too that are trying to create processes and have an impact for the community in ways that we hadn't thought and he he made the connections he's like the arts tie into all of this stuff like every you know commission that he's overseeing like the arts play a role. So like maybe you, we can help you and you can help us. And maybe that, I guess that gaze of like looking towards the city in a particular way, like maybe this will transform the way we see the way that we operate. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty big, big, big hopeful vision, but you know, it's just was such a unique consideration that I'm just excited that we might be able to like meet up with some folks that volunteer also that really care a lot about the things they care about and how we might be able to be helpful to one another. So yeah, anyway, it was, I left it, I left that meeting on a Friday for the first time in some time being like, whoa, like, hey, mm -hmm. <laughs> that might be really cool for us. So any other questions, comments, anybody want to? Lisa. Just a quick question about um, knowing he's in an interim position. Do we know how long he's been in that position and how long he might anticipate being in that position? I believe Velma, um, this, I believe he began two or three months ago. Is that right? I think it's less than six months. I want to say four months. 
That's the number I remember. I'm not sure how long, um, though, Joan, I mean, Lisa. He is right now um, seating their executive, you know, it's the same, like he's in the position to like seat, you know, all those um, senior leadership positions are being seated in February. So then we'll have those conversations post that. And that's, you know, the same for us. Like, it's hard for us to move forward without us having that sort of um, work solidified, so. Um, just a little bit more information. It looks like he was a compliance officer with civil rights since 2018, which is a, so he's been in civil rights for a while. Also, um, a number of department heads have resigned in the last year. There's a lot of interim people and so, um, and it's also an election year. And so, you know, they may appoint a new civil rights director tomorrow, but um, usually when things are like this in the city, people hold interim positions for a while. It's a hard time for someone to take on a job at the city of Minneapolis, given what 2020 looked like for the city of Minneapolis. That's really good feedback, Mary. Thank you for that. Um, any other questions? Um, I have a question. So what is, are there any uh, action items or follow-ups in the works or what? how can we support and move forward with engaging with this? So next steps are for him to work with his groups to seat their executive and then he wants to meet again. Um, and he wants to, you know, work with those um, individuals to find out how they feel about potential collaboration with us so he couldn't commit because he's you know he's like like mary is our director person he's that person for these different groups and they clearly have to kind of make their own decisions about where they spend their time and, and how they prioritize things but he loved the idea of of putting it out there and he felt like people might be really interested in knowing who we are at very least and like you know, sort of building our networks a bit, um, at least. Um, but there maybe there's something more um, with the meeting of the minds. So the next steps are to get our executive body seated, to get their their executive body seated, and then meet again um, once those conversations have advanced. So this is our preliminary conversation, also. <laughs> um, and so hopefully that's happening on on his end too. Um, but again, I you know I, I'm hesitant to speak too much um, on what his actions does will be too because he was really clear that like he doesn't want to make a decision for his groups and their chairs and vice chairs and stuff like that so um i hope that makes sense so i think our february meeting is going to be really interesting put it that way we're going to have a lot of updates and we're going to have we're going to know a lot more i mean i think we're going to have a really rich dialogue and i i look forward to it um any other questions or comments about this Okay, then the last item on our agenda is just the 2021 work plan. <laughs> and I still, I will always say that I am super proud of everybody for what we advanced the last two years for those of you who have participated and how we had work plans last year. And I know we got sidetracked, but you, that it was an enormous amount of work to get it finished and formalized. And I just am still proud of us for doing it. Um, but right now we're just putting everything on hold because we just are floating in such an uncertain space about where we have agency and what and what what will be the best use of our energy. Um, Commissioner Henry. Is now the best time then to discuss the budget, even if we know what we're going to do with it, as long as we because. I just feel that it usually happens early on in the beginning part of the year, so if we wait um how you know how good is that for us i do not believe that we will have access to a budget mary you can correct me if i'm right but last year's budget was um something that hadn't happened at least not in a long time um and from what i'm told that those types of buckets of funding are no longer available to us, but I think we should probably clarify that. So I'm not sure if a budget discussion actually is gonna be something that we can advance. Mary, do you have any insight about that? I think it's like, the question is not, do you have a budget? I think the question is, 
think it's more like if you have something you really want to do and you need some, you know, not a huge pot of money for it, but some money for it. Um, but I think you would need to propose an idea, especially considering that last year's funds didn't get spent. So I don't think it's not, I think you need to have an idea. Okay, no, I just wanted to make sure I missed our last executive meeting, so I wasn't sure if we talked about venues, whether we're virtual or not and collaborating with venues. Um, and then obviously there's a space for budget for that and artist panel that we did not um, do last year. This would be the best time I think to interview George Floyd artists. That is a good idea. You know, there's ideas that we I have anyway, and I didn't know if the budget was discussed. So thank you for that information. And it's good to know that that's an opportunity. Um, and maybe to advance that we could, um, could we start an ideas list in a Google Drive, maybe bringing some of the things we didn't get to do last year forward and thinking about what we might wanna do this year forward, um, knowing also that we are down a lot of people and so capacity is gonna be an issue, but thank you, Commissioner Henry. Um, I'm happy to start that document and I'll share it with you all. Um, and maybe we can even just make it a 2021 work plan. Like, yes, it's budget conversation, but it's also like, what are we going to commit to doing? Um, so we can start there. Does that sound okay for next steps? Yes, thank you. Good. Any other comments or questions? I'm sorry, I know we're a couple minutes over time and I pride myself in being done right on the right on the nose, but I <laughs> mean, um, does anybody else have anything that they want to bring forward before we meet next? I think our next agenda is pretty jazzy. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. I know it's January. But we, we've got a new president. Hey. Woo. <laughs> um, I, I hope you all go in, in peace and safety and, and thank you for your service. And I look forward to working with you all this year and um, we'll have a few, some things to accomplish between now and when we meet next month. But um, as always, my door is open. Please reach out if you have anything that you want to talk about or um, are concerned about. And, and until then, I think we can adjourn. Um, the regular meeting of the Minneapolis Arts Commission. Wait, I'm reading. I'm reading the beginning. I'm sorry. I have these weird scripts for this online meeting. I apologize. Um, with that, we have completed all items on the agenda for this meeting. I will ask members and staff if there are any other matters to come before this meeting. I see lots of heads shaking. No, okay. If not, and without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you all. 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 President's Day. President's Day.